open, open. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Don't waste your time this morning. Open. Yes, Lord. Hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, open yourself now. He's about to transform you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. I can't hear nobody. Yes. Open. Oh, this is the song of a dead man. Why don't I hear you? Yeah. is coming up. Yes! 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 I gotta teach and pray, but I feel one more in me. Yes! Yes! Hey! Yes! 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 You don't know what's happening right now. Yes, early in the morning, my soul said yes. I said early in the morning, my soul said yes. Before the sun comes up, my soul said yes. Yes, Lord. Whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Yes, Lord. some stuff to pray about <laughs> son of God welcome to the cry prayer movement if, if you can get with me I'm going to instruct you for a couple of minutes and then we're going back home to go back to sleep um, I pray every morning at 5 and um, I've been up to pray and we're going to pray today I have something to say to you if you can kind of if you're comfortable get closer because um, we're going to do some things today and I'm gonna probably lay hands on all of you something's on me um, my answer is yes when you meet a man that prays in the morning he can do things that other men can't. <laughs> From business to prosperity to whatever, when men pray, dangerous things happen. Say that after me. When men pray, dangerous things happen. The church has been built on women that pray, and it's good. It's a, that's not a problem. But the problem is, is when men don't pray, the things we don't see we will pray and um, whether there's 10 or 20 of us here we're gonna pray 
I have a, 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 a prayer topic for you this morning that's going to be a bit uncomfortable, but we're going to pray it anyway. Um, have you ever really considered Psalms 119? It is an extremely rich texture of scripture that actually reveals all of the Bible. If you want to understand the Bible, you have to understand Psalms 119. It is written, in fact, by a psalmist, but it journeys through the whole of life. If you start from the first chapter all the way to the end, it's the longest psalms in the psalms, but it explores all of life. Every emotion you will ever find is in Psalms 119. When you go home to, to go back to sleep, praise the Lord, think about Psalms 119. It's going to be rich. It's, you find a sadness. You find disappointment. You find anger. You find fear. You find frustration. You find confusion. All in Psalms 119. It's the most intriguing Psalms I've ever read in my life. Mocha preach it. And Psalms will conclude of the Bible. It really explains the whole thing. And here's what the Lord gave us. The Lord gave us an interpretation and an explanation of the human experience through Psalms 119. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I hid it there. I, I went past everything I saw, everything that happened, everything I seen to hide it there that I would not sin against thee. So we're dealing with that. But the subject of this morning's prayer meeting is, is going to be complete. Uh, uh, complicated. Before I do that, Evan, I love you. Thank you for everything you do. Um, this needs to be much bigger. And if Chicago don't want, I'll take it as well. But this needs to be bigger. Men need to pray, period. And they need to learn manhood through prayer. Manhood through prayer, period. Um, this morning's prayer challenge is discipline. Um, I don't think we understand fully that Christianity is a discipline. Doctrine is a discipline. Husbandry is a discipline. Being a father is a discipline. Even down, I'm going to make you do this before we go home, to praying in the spirit. It's a discipline. You have to discipline yourself in another tongue. The reason is, is because your mentality, your intellect, your scholarship, your study, your reasoning, your rationale, it will have a limit. So when you discipline yourself, even in another tongue, what happens is your prayer life goes to another level and you end up finding yourself in brand new focus. I don't know very many men, KJ, that are disciplined. When you hear discipline, you hear rebuked, corrected. No, discipline is bigger than that. Discipline is, is how I live my day, how I do my week, what my month has afforded me. Scream discipline. discipline. You cannot be a good dad and not be disciplined. Open yourself. Come on. You can't be a good father and not value discipline. And discipline requires partnership. So what that means is if you're 70, 60, 50, somebody should have the right to tell you you are out of order. And you say, yes, sir, without rebuttal, because that's how you protect scream discipline. Now, discipline is how you protect your doctrine. You know how you become a heretic? No discipline. You know how you lose to lust? Discipline. I don't, the world and the culture will say, oh, men are bound with lust, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I think they just don't have discipline. Because when you lose men become the comfort. Because discipline as men, we lose our authority.
So then there's a definite connection between discipline and authority. Why was God walking with Adam in the cool of the day? Do you think God just didn't have nothing to do? No, he was teaching him discipline. Every day you need discipline. Now, discipline is not always corrective. It's, it's not you did something wrong, and that's why you reject it. Because you think when something or someone disciplines you, you did something wrong. But that's because you're prone to performance. What discipline is, is building, it's programming, it's, it's placing. Discipline is this is how you have to be to be what you are, period. Discipline is not you got an F on your report card, let me beat your butt. That's not discipline, that's chastisement. Discipline has to do with your regiment. It has to do with who you are, how you are, what you have to do, and what you have to be. And I feel in the earth a new need for discipline, for, for men to understand the need to be disciplined. Regimented, scheduled, rudimented, um, and clear on who they are. In Psalms 119, I've studied it all my uh, Christian life. I didn't realize how much discipline was in there. Your law is better than life. That wasn't Moses. That was discipline. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might sin against thee. That's not talking about the Ten Commandments, and I honor those. That's talking about you train me daily, and you teach me what to do with my days. Throw them hands up and say discipline. In the book of Hebrews, there's something that, that is said by the writer that talks about if somebody cannot be corrected, they are a bastard in fact. And because they are a bastard, they have no inheritance. The problem with masculinity, manhood, all of that is no value for discipline because they see discipline as rejection and discipline as abandonment and, and, and discipline as punishment. But the Lord chastises who he loves. Problem is, watch this, open up, deep breath. Why do I feel God's power right now? Deep breath. The problem is, I don't know very many men that know God's love. Now, that's an easy statement, but it's hard. You're sitting here, but you don't know God's love. You know God's provision. You know God's favor. You know God's love is very corrective, especially on men. Because he, okay, come on, y'all. He replicates himself through you. He called Jesus the son. So because he replicates himself through you, what he does is chastises to correct unto wisdom, not unto failure or fault, unto better, unto proof. You are brought up because of what's right with you, not because of what's wrong with you. So you need discipline. One of the things I, I praise God for, if you see me run or dance or holler, it's because I was grown to military parents. And it was painful um, as crap. Uncomfortable as crap. I did not like it while I was in it. But that's what the scripture says. The scripture says no correction feels good. And so my mom, um, my dad, my grandmother were all soldiers to the U.S. Army. So realize when I say, yes, sir, I mean it. So a part of what that means is that I did not understand why the regiment, the rudiment, the schedule, the necessity, I didn't get it because it wasn't fun. But fun is immaturity. If you, if you, if you, listen to me. If you date in fun, you're immature. If you work in fun, it's immature. You need to be disciplined. So I was the guy waking up like now at five to run around <laughs> the largest high school in Chicago. My principal learned about it and said, will you pray? And I'm like, why? She's like, I heard you were saved. Can you pray for this HIV status? That's my real testimony. She said, will you pray for this murder rate? 
That's how this church started, a prayer meeting around an American flagpole on 87th Street. The premise was discipline. I could get up when nobody else would. I would say yes, sir, when nobody else could. I would set, watch this, I would separate myself. David had three anointings, Deuter, and the hardest one was when he was in front of his brothers. So I had to endure being separated from my peers because of the oil. And there are those of you in the room that don't know how to handle the oil that separates. You, you can conceptualize the oil that consecrates. Open yourself now. You can conceptualize the oil that consecrates. You cannot conceptualize the oil that separates. And there is an oil that will remove you from the statistic. You're not them. And you won't ever be. Say yes. yes. You're not them and you can never be. Say yes. yes. You're not them and you can't marry how they do. You can't date how they do. You can't. You just have to receive the oil of distinction. And when you learn to pray and you learn to intercede, that will hit you hard. It'll fall on you very hard. Now, one of the things I, I appreciate devotion. I love you more than, come here. Give me a minute, y'all. You are one of the most important things in my world. That's why I'm struggling. I'm struggling bad. Because I adore you. Um, the oil that separates you causes a lot of stuff around you. The activity, the social activity, the mental activity, because here's a problem. The oil hits your head. You don't always know what happened. So the oil hits your head and, 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 and Samuel comes up to you and is like, you're the one. And you're like, what does that mean? What did you just say? What does Jesse think about it? And what do I do with these sheep? I've been in hiding, serving them. So how do you live when the oil separates you? But there is an oil that will separate you. And when it separates you, it determines how you pray. 